against Monticelli. And next week is our 14th and final stop on our winter tour of telecast, and it'll be the General Tire Tournament of Champions, Bo, and tremendous field, more than 52. Actually, 53 players this year. Chris, uh, Dave Davis invoked his uh, right as a former champion to enter the tournament, so let's look at some of the players that are there, and obviously some very, very tough players, all name marquee players. $65,000 for first prize next week. And Jess Stabrook is on the bubble. In other words, if uh, Mike Edwards should win, he's the tournament leader, then Stabrook would be out of that field and Edwards in. But if is a big two-letter word, isn't it? Here we go now into the second game. Pete Weber going against Amleto Monicelli of Barakisimato, Venezuela. Well, advantage Pete Weber. Pete just needs a little confidence in the championship round after two disastrous tournaments, uh, one in Las Vegas and one at the Quaker State. And he's off and rolling. Monticelli, I believe, is the toughest player among this field of five. When he gets lined up, he can hold the pair, as we call it, for longer than any of these players. So let's see how he gets going in the early three frames. Oh, what a kiss. A little backdoor action there. That Woo. was. Woo. The classic style of Monicelli, that stutter, five and a half step delivery, the high backswing, very similar to Weber's, except he opens his hand, then drives it straight through this target area, much like Mark Roth did years ago, except Monicelli has more of what we call a modern release where the ball rolls out, the two tripped out to four, and he's off to a great start. Two and sleeper eight on the left lane. And let him on the telly. From a low angle, you see a shot we've seen a number of times today. The ball just barely sliding by the head pin, leaving the 2 8. Third time we've seen that today. And the championship pair setting them up. Basically, the left hand lane 11 hangs a little bit more than the right hand lane. And with synthetic lanes, the ball reacts a little bit more to the oil and a little bit more to the dry. Sets up that type of shot. Nicely done, and let him on the 32-year-old. Player of the year, back-to-back, -back, 89 and 90. Pete Weber just playing an ideal shot. He's playing where he slides about in this area. He's going right about between the second and third arrows, driving it right into this zone. Now, you can see on the, the right-hand lane, he'll be more around the second arrow on the tighter lane. Oh, Weber now with that double. Takes a 10-pin lead here in the second match. If you just joined us, he won the first game against Kelly Kaufman, 215 to 188. Now, we saw Weber just inside the third arrow on the right-hand lane. Now, as he comes up on the left-hand lane, he has a slight edge in the match. He's relaxed from a match win over Kelly Kaufman. Plus, he's made the adjustment on this lane. He'll either go with a little less speed, a little bit more turn, and a little more angle outside. Tomorrow here on ABC, the pursuit of hockey's ultimate goal begins. That's right, the Stanley Cup playoffs get in Canada. A two. Amleto with a big step over in the second to last step. Watch this, here it is, it perfect. He steps too far to the left, gets the ball inside of his target, stays in that higher oil concentration in the center of the lane and slides by the head pin. The two pin seems like the pin of choice when you miss, and they're missing mostly to the right today. Okay. Now Monicelli, he's playing an angle pretty deep on the right-hand lane, right around the third arrow. On the left-hand lane, I believe he's going to try to make a move a little bit more between the second and third arrows or reduce his speed. That's either one will work on the synthetic lane. So let's see what happens. He needs to hit this lane to get back in contention. Yeah. All right. 
This is our second game of the IOF Bar Series. You know, while visiting champions one week from today, right here on ABC Live. George Branham, the defending champion. So far here in game two, Pete Weber perfect through three, leads Amleto Monticelli by 21. Okay, here's a man in Wellesley, Ontario, made 218 ringers out of a possible 236, Walter A. Williams, Jr. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. With me is Marshall. Marshall, you've been a uh, hell of a bowler all these years, and uh, now you're getting ready to go out there and make a TV appearance. Uh, how's it going to go? Well, I'm feeling very confident, Walter. You know, it's been a long time, and uh, it was such a thrill to make the top five. Uh, I feel real loose. I watched you last night. You look like the old Marshall. He's going to be tough. Thanks. Two and three of the many reasons that I'm proud to be a part of uh, this series, Bo. Wonderful people. And wonderful talents. Oh. Pete Weber off to a great start. Has put the squeeze on two-time bowler of the year. And Leto Monticelli. Monticelli trailing by 41. Mandatory. He throws some strikes. Fifth frame. That's a double and very important for Amleta Monicelli, whose wife, Teresa, and sister, Angela, are building a home for Teresa and Amleto. Teresa, the architect, and Angela, the engineer. Be done in about a month. It's supposed to be beautiful. Now two great bowlers, great abilities, have studied the game, armed with great equipment at the zenith of their careers. Neither one of these men will falter. Right now, Monticelli needs a strike to cut Weber's lead to 21. <laughs> Seriously sensitive to the dry. That's the way the players will call it. You see the shot of Amleto Monticelli. He's moved farther out here on the left-hand lane. You see him crossing closer to the second arrow. Gets it out to the dry part of the lane, which is approximately 41 feet down the surface from the foul line. It takes that big break. He's lucky to get away from the split. Has the 3-6 spare. Great form. Fine follow-through. But Amleto Monticelli here in the second game is going against Pete Weber, who has five in a row. Frame number six. Well, the string ends at five. Well, I'm really miffed at that shot by Weber as he goes high and leaves the 3, 9, 10. Needs to get the ball over here between the 3 and 10 and hopefully take out the 9. He'll probably go down the right-hand side of the lane surface to get enough angle on the 3 pin. Well, let's see what happens now, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, Weber is finally throwing a ball that is out of character, and that's been his kind of his uh, pro forma this year. He's had the games where he had him well in hand as he had Monticelli on the ropes, and now he's let him off the ropes. A lead that could have been up to 50 pins has now been squandered down to mm -hmm. just 18. Second game beyond the halfway point. Be more in a little while.